In this lesson, what we're going to be covering is a little bit about navigation and then some of the fields in uh, the schedule. And then we're going to move on to the uh, inventory. So let's go ahead and look at this. Basically, we're in the clients area now. We're going to look at it, just the portal for the uh, schedule services. Then we're going to look at the inventory. So let's do that now. We're going to go in. and What I wanted to do is point out that you can navigate directly to any portal where portal data is uh, collected. And these are the individual records where in the actual, let's move over there, in the actual sc screen here, you can see that the records are in a portal. So these are the individual records that get you back either by this direction, by clicking on the portal, or going in and looking at this option menu over here, where you can go ahead and go directly in this way. So let's go talk about the service inventory. What the service inventory is, depending upon how your business is set up, you might have a warehouse, you may not, maybe it's a garage, or and or you have a truck with uh, property f that you own on the truck that you use to do your services. Or you may be working for a company and you're an independent that does service uh, repairs for that company. Well, this application gives you the ability to identify what kind of things you have on your truck or in your storage or things that you can actually go out and get that you may have at one time depending on the season and then another time you may not have them but you have the ability to show those as items that you have available to you if you needed them. Now depending upon the kind of business that you do depends on how you actually uh, buy and stock items. You obviously have to have fast moving items and maybe some medium moving items in case you run into a situation where you have to have them and they're a long term kind of a uh, locate item. So let's take a look at the uh, actual screen that we're working with. This is the service inventory. And basically what you do, and this is a little different than I've done in the past, what I'm doing is asking you to put the uh, both the a nomenclature and the part number for the items in your company in the same field. I used to split them out, <clears throat> but what it did is it took a lot more real estate just to have one item that you wanted to look for. And this helps you when you're looking it up. You see the part number and the name in the inventory list view so you can see exactly what you're looking for or do a find on either one, the part number and the actual name of the item. There's also the part price is what you're going to sell it for, the cost, and this is based on what your different vendors offer you for a cost where you can sell them at what margin, and then it actually will deduct the amount uh, that you're selling it for from the total that it's going to be sold at and shows you the margin difference. So you're making $40 on this item minus any other expenses and overhead. Then you have the vendor has a part number or name that he puts in for the item. And in this particular case, I broke them out separately so that you can go do a search for an item in a vendor's records for all the vendors that are out there. And you can do that, interestingly enough, by the, say there's several uh, different places where you might have this in your inventory, but they come from different vendors and they may be slightly different, but they're the same. This gives you the ability to look up by nomenclature and see if it's ex exactly the same uh, part. And you may have your own separate part numbers for each one of those different vendors part numbers that they use, because they're going to be different, obviously, uh, depending on uh, how they're going to ship them to you. They might ship them from different manufacturers, but it's exactly the same replacement part. You've seen that, I'm sure, over the history of doing service. There's obviously the image <clears throat> of the actual item, so you get a visual uh, confirmation of what you're actually storing in your image inventory. So you could walk out with your iPad and walk up and verify that this is what you're looking for. And you can also have the nomenclature for both the vendor and you to verify that this is the correct item. The next thing you want to do in this thing is when you're setting up a record, say for the first time, you have to determine what you want as a high level on the shelf and a low level. The quantity on hand you do not have control of in this screen. Basically, you go out to the purchase orders, you create a purchase order, or when you're first starting up your, your business and you do an initial inventory, you go to the purchase order, but you have to have the parts in here first. You go to the inventory and then go ahead and add a purchase order, and you can do what I call an initial inventory purchase order, where you take everything that you have in your inventory and put it all into one purchase order, and the vendor would be a generic initial uh, inventory would be what you would do for that particular vendor name. <clears throat> Once those are all in here and they, you actually show the purchase for the inventory that you have, then these fields will automatically start calculating. For example, this comes from an invoice or a work order where if you 
are actually selling something over here. For example, <clears throat> the quantity that was actually used was two on this particular work order. So the two is actually translated over here, and it keeps adding. For every one you, or, uh, you actually use, this number will increase. And then for every quantity of order that you bring in from the purchase side, it will automatically add to the on hand. So if I needed two and I'm down two, am I going to order two? I sure would. I would order two to bring it back up to my high level. So if I order two, it's going to bring this uh, the quantity on hand back up to zero. Well, maybe I need to order more than that. Well, yes, you may want to order four. So you have two on hand, and maybe you want to even order more than that. And it really is this game you play of how many things are required over a period of time. Hence the reason for this portal right here. This is where work orders this item. This is the part number for this item. This is the work order where you pulled it down in the actual work order and picked this item from this list up here. And every time you create a work order, and in this particular case it was work order number one, you put in the quantity on the work order, you put in uh, the labor and the parts in the work order, and it summarizes them in the screen. And if you wanted to go over and actually look at that work order, we're not going to do it now, but if you did actually click on this uh, edit button, it would take and open that work order to that item and you can verify all the information in there and see what was actually on order. And in the same way, you can pop over here and click on this and what it's going to do, it's going to bring up the purchase order and it's going to show you the purchase order of the item that was actually ordered and you can go ahead and again view the record for over there. Now you're going to notice one thing, it says do not edit records in this portal. If you click on it, it's not going to allow you to edit those records. So what you want to do is you can go in here and view what's been ordered to see uh, if it's in there. But you do have the ability, if you wanted to, to receive them from here. You can come up, take the numeric keyboard, and add a receive quantity. But this is not the appropriate place to do that. I just gave you the ability to edit this if you needed to from within this screen. And the pop over to get rid of it, click anywhere in the gray or on the button itself. It'll go away, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you had to delete a record, once you add data to a record and you're using it, do not delete it. That is not a good practice, and I want to point that out. The only reason the delete button, button is in these areas is that if you had to delete something when you put it in, you never sold it, you never had any transactions for it, and you're just going to go ahead and not even, for example, didn't even have any inventory for it, you would go ahead and delete it. Down here at the bottom, you have an inventory select edit portal. And what this basically does is it shows you the service parts that are all in the inventory, in a, everything that's in your inventory in an alphanumeric order. So if you wanted to, you could scroll right through here to see if you had one or more records for the same item. And you could scroll through there. Or you can jump over into that portal uh, for the inventory portal and go ahead and run a find in there to find uh, a particular record or set of records based on whatever criteria you want to uh, use in that portal. Notice here that the dollar sign is here and watch this. You can click on the actual dollar sign and then edit it if you were in a record and if you wanted to change it. In some countries or like over in the Middle East you may want to be working in different countries and you want to change your work order while you're in one country, print something and then change it back to your own country. You have that flexibility to do that if you need to. Again, there's a service work order, each not a service, but the inventory ID number. For each inventory item, they have a number on it. And you can actually do a find if you know what the number is for an item and do a quick search. Just put in the number, and it'll bring up that record. OK, so this pretty well covers the application for the service inventory. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out here is that if you need support at any time, you always have free support. So what you would need to do is contact me on the developer's website either by chat or send me an email. And for example, you may have a question like this. How do I replace this image if I have to or add one? Well, it's as simple as this. It's like the other one. You tap on it and replace it or add one from your library. And how do you get it in your library? You have the option to either email or go to a website and download an image from a website that you want to use in your website. For example, that was why you could take a vendor record and go to their their uh, inventory system and take one of their images out and copy it and then paste it in here for yourself. It does have the ability, for example, if you wanted to, you could copy it, paste it down on your desktop, just about everything that's in their inventory, put it in a folder, and also uh, obviously name it for the item with a part number that you need it to have, and then just 
import them over into your uh, photo library on your iPad and then go ahead and bring them down into your application. There's many ways to do this. It's really up to you how you want to do it. Okay, so this will conclude this tutorial. If you have questions, contact me on the developer site.